If I had to think of a good example of a game series doing well, and a game series doing bad at the current moment, Devil May Cry and Metal Gear Solid both come to mind. However, this wasn't always the case. A couple generations ago, both games were at the peak of their franchises, I'd argue. Well, Devil May Cry might be reaching new heights now, but Metal Gear sure as hell isn't. Why is that? What is it that Devil May Cry did to reach this point when it started in a place very similar to Metal Gear Solid? And what did Metal Gear Solid do to drop so far down? I'm Pliskin, and today, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. While the first two Devil May Cry games definitely have their merit, well, maybe one more so than two, many would argue, including myself, that Devil May Cry 3 is where the developers found the winning formula for the franchise. A formula that included light puzzle elements, well-designed boss fights that require multiple strategies and reward you with new weapons once you beat them, a strong narrative that includes the Sparta family drama and brings in some of the strongest side characters in the series, unlockables and multiple characters to play as, bloody palace mode for after you beat the game to test your might against all the enemies, and some of the most badass theme music I've ever heard. While Devil May Cry 4 went down this same route, it didn't achieve the success of Devil May Cry 3, mostly due to budget issues and behind the scenes problems. So Devil May Cry 5 is definitely the champion in taking the series to new heights, because they take on this formula and they expand it in almost every single way. But Devil May Cry 5 is more than just a rehash Devil May Cry 3 as they expand on the formula by putting in new characters with interesting playstyles, new map environments, different scenarios, Bloody Palace works more like it does in 4, so they build upon it while keeping that same identity there, that same identity alive. The Metal Gear series did this as well, however, it did this almost 20 years ago. Metal Gear Solid 2 expanded on all of the foundation that Metal Gear Solid 1 set for the series. It brought in a first-person shooting mode, which expanded the stealth and gave the player many more options than what they initially had in the original. Metal Gear Solid 2 also expands on the traps with the interesting bomb sensors, the cameras, and gun ciphers that are hidden around the map. The compartmentalized map design from Metal Gear Solid 1 is back and even better than before, with the big shell literally being segmented stealth puzzles for you to tackle. Every single strut includes a different layout, guard setup, and gimmick for the player to tackle. But of course, the major improvement that Metal Gear Solid 2 made on Metal Gear Solid 1 is the better AI. Enemies now, instead of going directly into alert, will go into an evasion status where they try to hunt you down, they have search parties, designated enemies that are there to search you and engage in combat, not just more guards. They'll look for you, if they can't find you, you have about a minute or two where they go into a caution mode, where you have to wait around for them to resume their normal patrols, otherwise risk getting caught a lot easier. Metal Gear Solid 3 took things even further. It took all of the innovations from 2 and built upon them. For example, you have the disguise mechanic, which now has a lot more versatility, meaning, and is a lot less gimmicky. You have outdoor stealth sections that change everything using grass, camouflage, wildlife. There are now even survival mechanics added in where Snake must feed himself and must also patch himself up, which adds even more weight to the combat. Whereas in Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, you just had to pop a ration and you would be fine, making a lot of the combat encounters about being able to tank shots rather than strategic placement, weapon knowledge, and then consequence afterwards. There's also been a complete overhaul about the ways that you can go about tackling your enemies. Of course, you have the stop and pop method of the Trank gun, you have straight up combat with assault rifles, sneaking by them, but now you can actually manipulate what weapons your enemies have and how much food they have by destroying their weapon and food checks. This is a level of interaction not even seen in games today. Metal Gear Solid 3 was so ahead of its time because of the freedom that it gave the player. It seemed like the developers at Kojima Studios now had an easy time. All they had to do was build upon Snake Eater, take those elements from 2 and 3, mash them together and you would have the perfect Metal Gear game with Metal Gear Solid 4. Follow the formula, just like Devil May Cry did. 
But this isn't what happened. Instead, we got a watered down sequel. Yes, the innovations with CQC were there, and the stealth was still tight, and the game was pretty fun. However, it was disorganized, unfocused, too full of set pieces, didn't know if it wanted to be a game where you have to sneak through a battlefield, or if it wanted to be like a Last of Us type story game. It changed a lot, it added a lot of good things, however, it took away a lot of the things that made a lot of the people, like me, in love with the series in the first place. This was a devolution from Metal Gear Solid 2 and Snake Eater. Metal Gear Solid 5 seemed really promising as here you are, Metal Gear setting, open world stealth. That sounds so cool. When I was waiting for it to come out, I couldn't help but think, I can't wait to disrupt uh, food supply chains. I can't wait to blow up their shacks. I can't wait to use disguises. I can't wait to do all the things I did in Snake Eater 2 and more now in an open setting. But this isn't what happened. Metal Gear Solid 5 does bring a lot to the table with its open world design and has a really addictive, fun gameplay loop that builds off of the foundation set in Peace Walker. The issue is, it's not the foundation of Peace Walker that really made the Metal Gear series as famous as it is today. It's the foundation of the crazy story in 2 and the crazy gameplay elements of 3. Metal Gear Solid 5 doesn't even really have boss fights, it does, but they're dull compared to boss fights that came out like 20 years ago. The fact of the matter is that while Metal Gear Solid 5 and 4 are both good games that bring a lot to the table for the franchise, they deviate too much from the formula. For every single thing they add, they take it away, and then Metal Gear Solid 5 took it even further by having certain elements from Snake Eater like changing your enemies loadout by disrupting the supply chains, however, you do this through a menu. Again, it's a devolution of old school gameplay. They just deviated too far from the formula, and this is why I feel Devil May Cry soars while Metal Gear decays right now. When I fight Virgil as Nero, I feel like this is what the series has been building up towards. The rivalry between Dante and Virgil has been explored, and their ending here feels really satisfactory, where they accept, hey, we're always going to be competing with each other, but we have a common goal now, right? But Nero, his whole arc in Devil May Cry 4, while it felt a little underbaked, uses that untapped raw potential and delivers here in Devil May Cry 5. Like all, like I remember before Devil May Cry even came out, there would be all this fan art of like Nero and Virgil and everyone would imagine what that meeting would be like. The developers knew that and they expressed that through this story and used that story to build on that gameplay that's so familiar from 3 and 4 yet now it feels perfected with enough there to give it more flair. They stayed true to their formula, and as such, the identity of Devil May Cry stayed alive. As much as I'd like to, I just can't say the same for Metal Gear Solid. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 2's ending was perfect. It set up this weird climax of trying to figure out who the Patriots were, what is this system of control, all of this kind of stuff. And then we got a break from that with Snake Eater, bringing something fresh, telling us Big Boss's story, maybe setting up some sort of bigger scheme. And while 4 talks about that bigger scheme, it relies too much on Snake Eater. Rather than taking the heavy ending of Metal Gear Solid 2, the brilliant story setup happening there, and using Snake Eater to prop up some elements where it's needed, it instead uses Snake Eater as a base and then props it up with Metal Gear Solid 2, which makes for a much more boring, cheesy, heavy-handed story with plot holes. And th this, is, this is at the heart of the issue with Metal Gear, like I said before. While Devil May Cry followed its formula and delivered on the potential of older games, Metal Gear just drops the ball, gets rid of too much that people like, and tries to fit in too much new stuff without keeping what makes Metal Gear, Metal Gear at heart, where it becomes more so just a faint whimper of what it used to be back on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox generation. So, if there's anything I'm really trying to say, if I can sum it up in one sentence, if you have a winning formula, stick to it and build on it. Don't drop it. I mean, take your risks, but don't just drop everything that everyone loves. It makes no sense. Anyways, guys, this has been Pliskin. I really hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I think I'm going to go play some Devil May Cry now. See you next time.